My name is Fabian, uh, CEO of Black Tech Mecca, and we help cities better leverage data to build stronger black tech ecosystems. One of the main things I want to talk about is just the significance of uh, Black History Month and how uh, the, the founder of Black History Month actually impacted uh, me being with you all uh, here today. Does anyone know who the founder, uh, the father of Black History Month is? Not many people, okay. If I had my slides up, you'd see a picture, uh, but his name is uh, Carter G. Woodson. And so he was this brilliant historian that uh, created Black, well, was the father of Black History Month, and it started off as Black History Week. And one of his books that inspired me the most is called A Miseducation of the Negro. And the book is a series of essays that he wrote between the early 1900s, uh, like 1915 to 1930. And what inspired me when I read his book was that a lot of the same issues and challenges that he was discussing from, what is that, almost 100 years ago were some of the same things that I was still seeing in our communities, uh, reading it uh, in the present day. And what was remarkable about that was that learning about history inspired me to want to do more about the future and to create change for the future. And so, uh, I'm a big fan. This is my favorite, uh, favorite month of the year, so I'm glad to be spending it uh, with you all. And it's interesting how th that need and to be able to change the future and, and move towards progress is what brought me here. Oh, you guys can see the picture now. So that's my man, Carter G. Woodson, and uh, that's the, the book cover uh, for uh, Miseducation of the Negro. But one of the things that are interesting is, just like this book inspired me to want to create progress in, in the community, I think that's what unites us all here tonight, is that even though we come from different walks of life, we have different backgrounds, uh, we do different things, we all want to see progress. We all are pushing for progress in our communities, pushing for progress in our cities. And particularly when we look at the tech sector, a lot of us are also allies and advocates pushing for progress for a more inclusive tech ecosystem and being able to move that forward. And so that is the one thing that unites us all. But one of the interesting things is we talk about inclusive tech ecosystems and we throw the word tech ecosystem around a lot, but what does an inclusive tech ecosystem really even look like? How do we know when we have arrived at that point and where do we stand today? Now these are really you know, tough, meaty questions, challenging questions, but when you think about it and you take a step back and you look at them, to me, the key to answering those questions is not very sexy, it's not very hip, but the key to me is being able to measure. Measurement is the key uh, to progress. To be able to understand where you're at, understand where you want to go, and be able to chart that course to the future. And so that's one of our focuses, our main focus at, at uh, Black Tech Mecca is measurement. And so one of the things that we've developed is a way to assess the health of a city's black tech ecosystem across academic, corporate, and entrepreneurship. Now, before I go too much deeper you know, into that piece, though, uh, how did we get there? How did we even uh, start moving in that direction? And it really had to take a walk down memory lane where the spark for the idea uh, arrived when, as, as I was leading Google's Black Employee Group uh, globally, we were able to leverage data in some interesting ways to understand insights of black employees and what their needs were and be able to create solutions for that. And due to some of the su success we were able to have, that sparked the question, why aren't we taking the same data-driven approach for our cities and our communities? Why aren't we taking the same data-driven approach where we have smart cities, we have smart watches, we have smart cars, but we have dumb black tech ecosystems. There it goes again. <laughs> we have dumb black tech ecosystems that aren't uh, data driven uh, to be able to, to move forward. And so from that experience and looking out at what was happening in the community, it validated the need for a similar data driven approach. In Chicago and like many other cities, you can't throw a rock in the city without hitting a diversity and in tech initiative. Someone who's trying to close, close the gap, private sector, public sector, it's being attacked from all angles. But what we found was that no one was keeping score. No one could tell you with all these different initiatives what type of impact they were having on the black tech community. No one could tell you whether the black tech community was even any better off 
than it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. There was no way to tell. And so that's where we stepped up to the challenge. And uh, we partnered, well, we hired a team from UIC, a research team, and partnered with the city to be able to attack this and to define what is a black tech ecosystem, how do you measure the health of one, and how do you use that to go about uh, developing one. So let's talk a bit more about our framework, and then I'll get into uh, some of our results for Chicago. So our assessment framework is made of three main components. So one is the BTE map. And just let me let you know, it takes a lot of energy to say black tech ecosystem over and over. So our acronym is BTE. So that is, this is my official warning to you that I'll be transitioning from using black tech ecosystem uh, to BTE. That'll probably cut two minutes off of my time. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have a BTE map and we have a BTE index and a BTE scorecard. And I'll go into more detail about what each of those are. And I'm so upset, I, I had our uh, Chicago report, I had a printed copy that I wanted to pass around, but I uh, left it on the coffee table at home. So, uh, but we'll get to that, it's online, you, got, you guys can download the, the PDF version. But this is the first piece, this is our BTE map. And so, basically this is a visual map for how we think about and how we view the ecosystem, the black tech ecosystem. And it's broken down into three main verticals. The academic vertical, the corporate vertical, and the entrepreneurship vertical. So if you're doing anything in tech, you're gonna fall either in one of these cleanly or you're gonna span uh, a couple of them, depending on what you do. And you can see that we have a spectrum uh, from the bottom to the top in each one of those uh, given verticals. And you see some of the lines kind of show how they interact with each other. So that's the map, and I'll give you a sneak preview on what does the data availability look like when we look at Chicago's black tech ecosystem for those particular areas. So you'll see here that some of the, the boxes and areas in the different verticals, either we have some data and we can like roughly assess what's going on, or you'll see what we call data deserts, where you'll see uh, data is needed. And you probably notice a trend that, especially in the entrepreneurship vertical, that is some of the toughest data to get your hands on is black tech entrepreneurs or any type of diverse tech entrepreneurs and being able to know how they're doing. Uh, you also see that in the academic sector, once you start looking at universities and graduate level activities and things of that nature, uh, that data wasn't as uh, readily available uh, for us to be able to uh, tap into. So that was the BTE map. This is our BTE index. So when we're looking at, okay, what are the key items that we need to look at or evaluate to be able to assess the health? These are the 13 key dynamics uh, that we look at to be able to assess the, the vitality of an ecosystem. I'm not gonna go through all 13 of these, just for, for your knowledge, but I'll, I'll call out just a few to give you some context. So uh, the first one is entrepreneurial density. So that's looking at what's the density like for black tech entrepreneurs uh, in, in a city? and what's that critical mass look like compared to other tech entrepreneurs in that city. Uh, you also see that uh, mobility is a big piece. So how are black tech professionals moving up in their careers in that given city, and how do you assess that, that piece? But then you also look at mentorship and some of the softer ones such as culture. And believe it or not, there's ways that uh, certain cities are able to measure the culture. Is it a risk-taking culture? Different things of that nature. And so this is our index. Now, the, our, our secret sauce, which I don't, I'm not gonna show a, vi a visual of, is the scorecard. And so that's what ties each one of these indicators to metrics that we can then score and provide a numeric score for uh, a given city. So that's the index. But now let's move and talk about some of the findings uh, that we had from our Chicago uh, assessment that I was telling you about. So last year was a big year for us on the research front. So we were able to produce this framework and we released uh, a research paper on our thesis for, hey, this is how we define a black tech ecosystem, this is how you assess the health of one, and this is how you go about developing one. And then our second report was uh, this one, uh, applying that framework uh, to Chicago. So gosh, it's, a, it's quite a meaty and dense report because there's a lot of information to cover. So it was really difficult to figure out okay, if I have like 10 or 15 minutes and I've already probably burnt almost 11 minutes, you know, what would I tell you all today? What would I show you? So I have a couple, uh, actually I have about three or four uh, data points and things of that nature to discuss. So I'll try and fly through those so uh, we can have some time for questions. So 
Uh, this slide here looks at how Chicago compares to uh, 12 other markets that we looked at, as far as just the size of the black, te uh, black tech, uh, the number of black tech workers in the Chicago area. And so I have a better slide that goes into uh, more detail and like representation, but at overall, we were about in the middle, uh, a middle of the pack with the other 12 cities that we evaluated. However, one of the encouraging things was that we know that tech is a huge opportunity for being able to uh, earn income and generate wealth. One of the things that was, we were happy to find out, though, was that there is incredible potential for, uh, for income and equal, as an equalizer for the black community between folks that are the median earnings for black workers in tech is, nor, is almost more than double the median earnings for black workers just across the span. So imagine what that impact can have on a trajectory of a household, how that can completely change generations if you're able to double the household income uh, just by creating more opportunities and more support for folks to engage in the tech space. So that, that definitely validated a huge opportunity there. Another thing that I was surprised about, because normally reports are like these doomsday reports where oh, things are just terrible, they're going, going to crap, the world is going to end soon. But one thing I was encouraged about was the large number of uh, black tech workers uh, and the critical mass that we have in the Chicagoland area. I never sat down to think about how large was, what this, was this number or what it would be, but when I saw 40,000, I was really encouraged and also encouraged by the fact that the the black community makes up 9% of Chicago's tech workforce. And you compare that to, for the overall workforce, uh, they, uh, we make up 13%. So I was expecting a much wider gap there. Uh, so, you know, 4% delta wasn't, uh, wasn't terrible. Uh, but one thing that we saw was that while, you know, tech employment is growing for the city, uh, the amount of folks in the black tech industry, uh, well, uh, black folks in the tech industry, isn't growing at the same rate. Uh, this is an interesting slide because a lot of people ask, well, how do you define tech and how do you think about those things? So for our advisory board, we partnered with World Business Chicago because we didn't want to recreate the wheel. So we use their exact uh, industry codes for what they define as a tech industry and what they define as a tech occupation. And so this is an interesting breakdown where you see the number of folks in uh, the tech industry, the number of folks in, the, in tech occupations, and then that overlap. So a lot of times people ask, what is this tech industry business, or how does that work? So that's when you think about people that aren't necessarily developers, but they work at a tech company. So take an accountant, or a salesperson, or a project manager that is very much in the tech space, but they're just not in a technical uh, occupation. Uh, this is a pretty crazy slide, but I'll just give you a, a quick look at what's going on here. It's a lot to digest. On that far right side of the, uh, right, uh, the equation, that is the overall percentage that the black community makes up in the workforce, the whole workforce for uh, that particular city. And then you can see for occupations and industry, what's the black representation within the tech industry and uh, tech occupation. So you see Chicago here where it's 8% tech occupations, 8.8, .8, and then 13.3 of the total workforce. And then you can compare, you see how we kind of still are in that mid range uh, compared to uh, a lot of other cities, some of the other cities we looked at. I'm not even going to tackle this slide right now. It takes a long time to explain. Um, we worked with the research team on, is there a way to simplify this? But just with how the, the rows and columns work, um, after I, I kicked it around, I was like, okay, yeah, that is probably the simplest way we can display it. But it's in the, it's in the report. Uh, this is an interesting slide I can just touch on very quickly. So, you know, we were talking about these, these codes. So these are tech occupation codes. And then these are tech industry codes that I referenced earlier that uh, we partnered with World Business of Chicago on defining what is tech. And what's interesting about this one is for each occupation, each industry, uh, you'll see a breakdown of the number, the raw number of black professionals, the total number of professionals for that, and then the, the percentage, the proportion of black professionals for that given occupation or industry. And then you'll see the, uh, the annual wage. So one of the interesting things here was that we are over-represented in some of the lower paying uh, fields. So you see here uh, radio and telecommunication equipment installers and repairs, 22%. Uh, 
but it's only 47,000 as far as the, the, the median range, which is way lower than up here. So you look at a, a developer, uh, we're, we're only 4%. So that was one of the things we saw that while we have this big 40,000 number, when you start looking in a bit deeper, uh, we're, we're not uh, well represented in some of the higher paying uh, roles that are available. Uh, so uh, just closing out, these might look familiar. These are some of the key indicators uh, that we look at when we're evaluating. And so some of the takeaways were, for example, for talent, that we do have more local talent, uh, black tech talent, than most people uh, recognize. And we need to do a better job at engaging with that talent and cultivating that talent. Uh, also, mentorship. You can never underscore that. Uh, we always need more mentors and more support there. And mobility, this is one of the hardest things that when we do our next round of research, we have to figure out how to track because it's tougher to get that data over time and really understand how uh, folks are navigating there. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up so we can leave about 10 minutes uh, for questions. But uh, if anyone's probably asking, OK, what's next? You've done all this research. You know, what's happening? So the boring answer is, of course, more research <laughs> is, is coming. Uh, we're going to be doing a second round of research uh, with the goal of being able to actually navigate some of the data deserts that we encountered uh, to produce an actual score uh, for the city. So we're really excited about that, that second wave. But last year was really focused on research. This year is huge for education and engagement. So that's going to be one of our big focuses is how do we take this data and insights and engage with key stakeholders like government officials, diversity leaders, uh, tech allies, and community leaders to make sure we're getting this information into the right hands. So we're actually, we're going to be hosting our uh, State of the Black Tech Ecosystem Summit in June, where we're going to be convening leaders uh, from across the country uh, that are working on these type of uh, challenges and these type of initiatives in uh, their respective cities. So we're really excited about that. And this is my info. If you want to get in touch with me or check out Black Tech Mecca on our different channels, uh, that last link down there is a link to our uh, summit that's coming up in June. So if you want to check that out, sbte.co, not com, .co, uh, .com was taken, so we had to go to .co. Uh, you can go there and sign up for updates and uh, what we have going on. So, okay, I think I have about 10 minutes for uh, Q&A. So this is my favorite part, so we can get the party started. Cool. So I, I just want to ask maybe a very specific data question. Presuming that there's a ceiling that prevents um, black individuals from becoming CEOs. Did you find any data on what like financial resources are available to uh, black entrepreneurs, including like black investors, and then maybe the vitality of those uh, companies in terms of they succeed or fail within five years, and then how much they contribute both to like the GDP as well as maybe like black neighborhoods if they reinvest? That's a loaded question, Skylar. I'll, 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 I, I got an answer for you though. So just like you saw in the in the slide, like how challenging it is to get entrepreneur, just data on entrepreneurs, the investment data is even like tougher to get on from investors on them tracking the racial uh, profiles of the founders they're investing in. And so that's one of the problems that it's, it got a bit too deep for me. So now we're hiring a full-time research director <laughs> that can start like grappling with these, uh, these tough challenges and problems. But no, we have to find a way to get to some of those pieces because we can get all the corporate data that we want. But one of the, the true realities is that the biggest employers of the black community are the government and black owned businesses. So if we really want to move the needle for on the tech side, yeah, it's one, one, one front is you know, helping existing companies, making them more diverse. But the more larger black owned companies we can build, the data shows that uh, they hire more black people. And so, you know, that's an extremely important piece. Uh, you presented a way to track the progress of the BTE, but how do you change the reality on the ground for the indicators that the BTE measures? Change the reality on the ground. So, like, how do you improve the score, pretty much? How do you improve the score? Yeah. So, how we, what our main focuses are on research, education, and advocacy. So now we're on this research piece because the measurement side of the house is what we can then use to benchmark and ground and move everything uh, forward. For example, when we launched Black Tech Mecca, the, I, I didn't know we were turning into a research organization, honestly. Like, I just wanted us to go and start doing work and making things happen, but I realized there'd be no way to measure progress or measure the impact they were actually having. So we had to go upstream 
And when there wasn't any existing body of work or data for us to rely on, uh, we had to create our own. And so how I see things really working is just like the city of Chicago and other cities have tech growth plans for how they're going to, going to make the city more viable for tech, is that once you have these findings, once you have a scorecard, people that really care about this issue, key stakeholders, can come together and create a growth plan to increase that score and improve that score and the better help, the better help coordinate all the different resources and activities and initiatives uh, that are happening. You may, this might be included in the report, but did you guys uh, do a breakdown of men versus women? Yeah, so one of the so one of the slides I had that really confusing one. It did have it had gender, so it had like men and women and uh, representation in different industries. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of data on that though, because it's already hard enough a lot of times to find black data because a lot of times we're just lumped into minority, and so you don't really know what's happening. It's even tougher to get to the intersectionality. So black women, black LGBT, black veterans, like the, the intersectionality can be really uh, challenging as well. But um, that slide I showed, that was uh, probably about the extent that we had, but from the focus groups that we, we did and some of that type of more qualitative work, it came up over and over again that uh, black women do need their own uh, special support in systems and initiatives and, and uh, solutions. So that's definitely something we wanna be able to put some more data behind. Who else is involved in the Black Tech Mecca slash State of Black Tech ecosystem? Who else is involved? Oh, for, oh, for the event, for the summit. Okay, yeah, so uh, for the summit, we are, we're really excited about it. Um, it's coming together in June, and there's some of our usual suspects that you know, we've collaborated in the past with, uh, but for what we're looking to do, it's definitely in, engaging with our key stakeholder groups, which uh, we engage with certain government officials, so Congress, at the Congress level, um, state representatives, uh, those type of folks. Uh, we're gonna be engaging them for the summit. Also, different groups that are leading similar initiatives or leading initiatives that are focused on serving specific groups. Uh, so those are gonna be the folks that we work with. I, I can't share any of our official partners right now, but everything that we're looking to do is very collaborative because we can't do it all. So we do the research, we do the education, we do the advocacy piece, and then from there, uh, we're, we have to partner with other folks to actually move the needle. Hey, Fabian, so uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the work that you've done today has been primarily geared towards like, like advocating and getting public sector uh, involvement. I know you're definitely working with members of the private sector, but as I'm specifically thinking about you know, a lot of companies that are here in the merchandise market, as well as you know, venture capital firms with very traditional business models, how are you going to use your data to advocate to those who frankly would see it as a, as a change to the fundamental shift in their business model to actually start investing in the, in the black tech ecosystem as, as much as they should be? No, good question. So the good thing is that just like the headwinds are in our favor as far as this is the, the awareness for this issue is at an all time high. You don't really have to sell people on why it's important. Most people are now at the stage on, okay, what can I do, how should I go about it, and how can I make the most impact from it? And so that is where now it's our job to, okay, we have these insights, we have these findings, get the best minds in the room together to figure out what needs to happen, and then we can go to these companies and to these leaders and say, hey, you said you want to get involved, we've done the research, this is what needs to happen, and we're gonna be able to measure how effective things are. It's time to put your money where your mouth is, and we're gonna have transparency uh, and be able to really uh, measure progress. So that's the way that you know, I really think about it is being able to, that we, we're, we're in a great position to be able to leverage this information. We just need to know what we're talking about and go with the right ask. But the, I think the, the time is ripe uh, to make a good ask. Uh, is the data that you use to generate these results publicly accessible and are the results accessible via API? No, good question. So yes, yeah, so all of the data we used was secondary data. So for this first round of research, uh, that uh, the UIC team that we partnered with, uh, we're using mainly like workforce labor, uh, PUMS, uh, I forget all the acronyms, there's so many, uh, they're, they're, in our, they're cited in our report. But yeah, they, they were able to get their hands on it, they didn't need any uh, special permissions and things of that nature, so it is available. I don't know if it's available API-wise, but that's a question we're gonna be looking into because our research director, she's really gun ho 
on us being able to automate this process. And so APIs are going to be a huge part of that. So I hope, I hope they are. So like, if not, let's, that's uh, our first uh, petition or advocacy is getting that happen. As your research uh, tried to uh, identify, quantify uh, the involvement of tech industries uh, with youth in after school, night school programs, uh, where they could be mentoring and reaching kids as early as elementary school uh, to help them build uh, tech aptitudes uh, and careers? Can you quantify that or uh, do, you, do you have that data? Yeah, good question. So the most, excuse me, reliable data that we had for like the K through 12 side of the house was through uh, CS for all, computer science for all. So we partnered really closely with them, focus groups and like touring their sites and they had the CPS data that we were able to use. But no, it does get pretty difficult when you're looking at if it's not an institutionalized program to be able to find all those different programs, go collect their have them to even have the data <laughs> to, to share with you and then you know managing to collect it so i think that's going to be one of our tasks moving forward but to date and for this report uh cps and computer science for all was our one of our major sources there yeah, how can ally support help support the bte yeah so uh, one one piece is being informed and you know you don't have to, our, our research report is long, but I promise you can just look at the executive summary <laughs> and get you know, a few facts uh, that equip you because what allies can really help us do is to dispel some of the narratives that are out there currently. It, uh, for example, a lot of times people are quick to point to just being a pipeline problem. But from what we've seen in our research, black students that complete a four-year computer science degree, only 16% of them actually go on to a field where they're putting that degree to, to use. A lot of them end up in tech support roles and other things of that nature. So it's not a pipeline problem. Then also, you hear the, the question or the comment, well, we just can't find them. They're just not here. They just don't exist. Well, our report says there's 40,000 of them, you know, wandering around Chicago. And so where, where you all could really help and allies could really uh, plug in is, you know, equipping yourself with that knowledge. So in your conversations and decisions you're making, uh, you're, you have a more informed perspective. And that... I know it's simple and it sounds like it might not help, but it can really go a long way. Thank you so much. Give it up for Fabian Elliott.